To what extent would you say is this an Americanization of Torchwood? Well, it's kind of set in America, so if you call that, Americanization is obviously a loaded term, it's like a criticism. If you think about it, it's, they used to meet people from Mars, and people didn't go, oh, Torchwood's gone too Martian now. All it's done is go to bloody America. For Captain Jack, he's been to the year 100 trillion, that's like nothing. So it's, you know, it's set in America. It's like that's where the story leads them. They are arrested and literally taken there. But it also comes back to Wales. It come, half of episode five is set in Wales. Half of episode six is set in Wales. All of nine is over. So there's still a lot of Welsh stuff. We came back to Wales and filmed for about three weeks there. And we also did Welsh stuff in LA. We built Welsh houses in the studio and got Welsh actors in, which is quite bizarre. It's one of those moments where you look at your life and think, how obsessed with Wales am I? We have John Barham and we have Eve, we have Kai, Kai and we have all those people coming back with us. We have another British writer in, jo in John Fay. It's co-produced by the BBC. There's a lot of UK in there, a huge amount. You know, we know more about the UK than we know about America. You have to watch it. Sometimes when you first start writing American stuff, you start writing like an American cop. And then you start writing like Sweet Valley High or something, if you remember. What an old reference, if you remember. High School Musical, that'll do. Um, so you have to watch that, that you're not doing like a send-up of American stuff. But actually, once you're living there all the time and watching American TV all the time, you do get into the rhythm of that. And, and also the American actors then sort of smooth it out themselves. So it's kind of all right. I hope you can judge otherwise. Jane Espenson's work I had loved for so many years. And then you just meet her and you just think she's such an extraordinary person and such a great writer. She can do anything. So she was an absolute no-brainer for the show. Doris Egan's work I didn't know as well. And I, actually, I knew her from uh, her work on House. So actually, you know, I went to her for, for something else. Uh, John Scheiben, I had met to work with on other projects, completely loved him. He felt like a very natural fit, partly because of his sci-fi credentials, but more because he'd worked on uh, Breaking Bad and done that so well. Um, and kind of on and on and on it goes. I mean, stars came to this for co-production knowing this was the fourth year and knowing who Captain Jack was, so they were kind of on board that. You know, you sort of know that sort of stuff's going to keep people happy. So Yanto gets referenced, um, some Doctor Who stuff gets referenced, Silurians get said at one point, it's exciting. Um, that sort of stuff's all in there, not heavily, because it is its own show now. There's a couple of Sarah Jane Adventures references in it as well, but that's not the point. That's kind of me having fun. And genuinely, it's not just me having fun, I like it being a coherent universe like that. I like it all to spin together. But, um, you know, it stands on its own two feet as well, so I hope it does, definitely. So we, de we developed um, an episode one for Fox, and they never, ever queried, you know, the obvious one of John Barrowman's character of Captain Jack is omnisexual, and, you know, that he was always going to be gay. There was never going to be kind of any change to that. And Fox were great creative partners. They never tried to make it something it wasn't. I mean, ultimately, they, they didn't pick it up. They had Terra Nova filling their slot beautifully as 13 episodes. Um, and actually, the, you know, the best part of going for us into a cable environment was to tell 54-minute episodes with no commercial breaks, where, yeah, you, you've got more latitude to be dark and probing. Now, you've suggested in the past that this might be your final series of Torchwood. I know, do you know, I say that at the beginning of every year, and then I get to the end and I love it again. I go, oh, I love this show. So I don't know, it is time I moved on and did something else, but we'll just see how well this does. Maybe it's time someone else ran it, maybe I won't let anyone else ever run it. Who just can't, maybe it'll die a death? Who knows, you just can't tell. So um, I've certainly got other stuff I want to write. Because I've been in science fiction now for about six or seven years, and it's like, Lizo from Newsround over there, oh, he's not Newsround anymore, where, but he just accused me of doing science fiction for 10 years. It's like, it's not 10 years. Um, although I better stop before it is 10 years. So it's time to write other things. And you see in this first episode, there's a really nice scene of Gwen and her family. There's a scene with her baby, she meets her mother, and there's a really nice family dynamic going on. They all get on each other's nerves but like each other really. And I kind of watch that sort of stuff and think, I should, that's, that's the kind of thing I should be writing, families, small personal relations, I like that sort of stuff, so that's calling me back slowly.